In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is in our Gospel reading this morning that has Jesus traveling with his disciples was the typical way by walking to Jerusalem. And as they walk, Jesus tells them what is going to take place in the near future. Not only that, but he tells in somewhat detail what is going to happen to him in Jerusalem. He tells the disciples that he is going to be handed over by the chief priests and the scribes. He's going to be put on trial. They're going to find him guilty. They're going to sentence him to death. They're going to mock him. They're going to spit on him. They're going to flog him. And they're going to crucify him. And after three days, he will rise again. It is then, in this teaching moment, that James and John, the sons of Debedee, start asking Jesus for a favor. Will you do for us what we ask of you, Jesus? And Jesus says, what do you ask of me? Let one of us sit, one at your right hand, and one at your left hand in your kingdom. Jesus then tells them that is not for him to grant. Are they able to drink the cup he's able to drink? Are they able to suffer the sufferings and the persecutions that he will endure? And they say, yes. And then he, he admits it. Jesus says, you will drink the cup and the baptism that I am baptized with. After this conversation, though, the disciples, the other ten, become irritated. They don't like hearing about this thing, what James and John have just asked, to sit on thrones by Jesus. How great, how awesome would that be? They become irritated. They argue amongst each other upon greatness. Then Jesus tells them, the lords of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their magistrates exercise authority over them. It is then in verse 43 that Jesus brings his discussion with his disciples to a climax. He says these words, This shall not be among you, but whoever wants to be great among you will be servant of you. And whoever wants to be first will be slave of all. For the Son of Man even did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Greatness. We all want to be great in the eyes of others. No one here wants to be talked about behind their back in a negative connotation. We all want to be talked about in a positive way. We all want to be seen as great. But what is true greatness all about? We in our human mindset get it all mixed up. We think that greatness is a matter of people serving us, people bowing down to us, people worshiping us. That's what the disciples thought as well. And that's many times what we think as well, even inside the church. There are many pastors who pat themselves on the back after receiving many numerous, numerous suggestions of how great the sermon was. How great I am as a pastor. Jesus responds to that by saying, it shall not be among you. Or the layperson, you yourself possibly in a high position in the church. Jesus says, it shall not be among you or you who are on church council. It shall not be among you. Or if you are one who sits in Bible class, who thinks you know everything there is about the Bible, or almost, almost everything, at least you know more than the next guy, Jesus says to you, it shall not be among you. Jesus has a point for us. Greatness does not come from within. 
Remember how you became a Christian. What is it that makes you a Christian? It is the fact that God has called you. That God has sent his son Jesus to die for you. You have done nothing there is that makes you have clout, that makes you to be great. But how so often times we think that we are great and we stand out in the crowd. Jesus once again responds to us by saying, just like he did to the disciples, it shall not be among you. For Jesus continues, his entire conversation with the disciples has been on service, and yes, on greatness as well. The one who is truly great, he says, is the one who serves others. The one who wants to be first is the slave of all. Take, for instance, Ralph. Ralph was a local golfer, and he bragged about how good he was to others. He would many times sit in the coffee shop and brag to his friends and those sitting around him how good he was at playoff. He thought he was great. One day, though, in that coffee shop sat a retired professional golfer, and Ralph had no idea he was sitting there. In hearing Ralph's conversation, the man walked up to him, introduced himself as a professional golfer, and wanted to play golf with him. Ralph, well, he jumped at the chance. As a matter of fact, he went out and bought brand new golf balls for this occasion. So there he was on the golf course with this professional golfer who was retired. But the first hole, Ralph noticed since he was unfamiliar with this golf course, was a treacherous hole. The entire green was surrounded by water. So it was then that Ralph thought out loud, and he actually said his thoughts. Should I use an old ball because this hole is so treacherous, or a new ball? And that is when the professional golfer said, use a new ball. Be confident about what you are and who you are. So Ralph pulls out a new ball, puts it on the tee box, and gets ready to hit it. Just then the professional ball golfer said, take a practice swing first, please. So Ralph stepped back and took a swing and then stepped up to hit the ball. As he was making his delivery to the ball, the professional golfer yelled out and said, whoa, wait. After seeing your swing, you might want to use an old ball. <laughs> Ralph thought he was great, but was he really? Many times we think we are great by our own two feet, by our own stature. And God reminds us, it shall not be so among you. Jesus' greatness is not in the fact that angels worship him, not in the fact that we worship him, not in the fact that he is the son of God, not in the fact that he created the world, but it is in greatness is in his service to us. He died for our sins. He lives for us. That's what makes Jesus so great, is how he serves us to make us his people. Think about it. The position of catcher on a baseball team. What is it that makes a catcher great? It's not the fact that he can catch every pitch that comes to him or her. It is not the fact that he or her has a great arm and can throw anybody out on first, second, or third base. No, what makes a catcher great is they always put the team above themselves. If they're up to bat and they're given a sign to bunt, to sacrifice themselves for an advance a runner, and they do it, that's greatness. If they take charge and show leadership, that's greatness. It is the same for us as Christians as well. Doing things for others. Serving others. One of the biggest mistakes a leader or a king or a dictator can make is thinking that he is great because people serve him. 
or her. Instead, what the leader is truly all about is service to others. So where do we go from here as Christians? We who have been greatly, greatly, greatly served by our Lord Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection, how are we to respond? We should not respond by thinking that we're great in our own right, but always wanting to serve and help others in their time of need. Helping others in any situation. Because that is what true greatness is all about. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And because he gave his life as a ransom for us, we serve those around us. It is in conclusion, it reminds me of the story of the summer of 1986. Off the coast of Russia in the Black Sea, two ships collided. Hundreds of people died because they were thrown and hurled into the Black Sea, and they died of hypothermia into the icy waters below. What is the sad part of the story is the reason why both boats collided. It was not a technical issue. It was not a steering issue. It was not a mechanical issue. No, the problem, both captains thought themselves to be so great and that they both thought they belonged that neither one of them wanted to turn away from their course. And when they found out that they needed to, it was too late. Greatness in the eyes of our God, who has done everything for us, is in service. And how are we great? We are great by serving others around us, by praying for them, for caring for them, for loving them, as Christ has loved us, who died for us and gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. Amen.